All right, guys, haven't been around for ages, but I figured I'd uh, show you this. This is actually an interesting little project, and I mean little project because I figured it would take uh, a couple hours. <laughs> what it is, is it's a short track engine with a set of Rodex. Uh, I forget. One something. Track ones, geez, fried. Sorry, guys. So the track ones got a big D. These are obviously not done. These are done. These look pretty, right? You can see them. Those are pretty. But uh, it was an interesting uh, transition because because it's a short track. Even though that it does have an 8200 RPM max, these are actually showing. Schoenfeld headers. I didn't have the heads. They weren't going to take the heads off the engine. So I had a set of old gaskets that came off the heads. And I have the Schoenfelds. So I have to figure it out and make it work. And you have to take into consideration any offset you may get through the bolt holes and so forth. So, in any case, this hole's got to be a little bit bigger than your exhaust hole. And it's kind of interesting because when they come from the factory, these are Dynatech uh, adapters. They're aluminum with uh, steel threaded inserts, and they're made out of the hardest aluminum I've ever come across. I don't know what they do to it, but it is, it is tough to grind. It is... You would think it would take no time at all to make them, uh, grind them out, but uh, they take plenty of time. And uh, I wanted to show you guys, I don't know an easy way to explain this, but you need to keep the area this way. You need to keep the area there so you don't don't have a, a restriction, right? But if you take a look, it's a good size opening, right? Well, going from a little bit smaller opening to a bigger opening on an exhaust is not detrimental. In fact, it gives you an anti-reversion edge, which on a short track engine where you're, you're dipping down you know, it will go around the corner and you dip down a gear. <sighs> that mid-range really makes a big difference. So, you can see, I, mean, I would have rather had a big lip on the, on the bottom. Because that would be the slowest moving air and the top would be the highest moving air. You'd rather have that even on the top and an anti-reversion lip on the bottom. But I was not able to do that because of the height of the Track 1 exhausts. And these had to be a little bit bigger. Just to make no issues with the gasket. If you take a look at the gasket that came off. Okay. You see where that uh, mesh is? That's where it was assembled and... The gasket overhang, overhung into the port, and it just burned up the uh, the gasket. Okay, that's that's not really what you want. You got a little little edge right there, dipping right into the port. That's just going to cause turbulence, and it's not really going to help flow at all. So, what I wound up doing is I put these on, and I I have a good representation. Let's see if I can get them relatively straight here. I got these other bolts are in the way. I can't even show you guys. But here's the idea. I did a drawing on an E7 port. Okay, and what uh, the whole idea is... Now, obviously, I wasn't able to do it this way, but this would be nice if you could do it this way, right? Because the flow would go this way very smoothly. And what happens on the reflection is it, it hits these dead ends, right? And reflect. So it's harder for the air to come back into the chamber. Now what does that do? It acts kind of like a one-way valve, right? 
Well, why does that matter? Well, you're using a good sized cam with a lot of overlap. Right? You don't want any of the air pulsing back into the chamber because that's exhaust. Exhaust doesn't have fuel and oxygen that you need. So if you can keep the exhaust flowing in the direction you want, you'll make more power. Hope this was helpful, guys. I got to get back on this because they need to race this weekend. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.